Hey, welcome back to my cooking show with no name. Or uh, cooking name pending, whatever you want to call it. Uh, today I am going to be making a dish that was recommended to me, not something I kind of thought up myself. I did look up a couple different ways to make this dish and kind of am going to settle on a variant of a recipe that if whoever made this recipe saw me changing it would probably cry. Um, and I am going to be attempting and likely failing and probably burning at making beef wellington. So before starting this video, I made some dough very, very similar to the dough I made in the pot pie video. Much smaller amount. Um, I just figured it was just me dumping some flour half a stick, it was a cup of flour, half a stick of butter, some sprinkles of salt, all into a food processor and hitting poles and then putting in the fridge. Uh, that had to go in the fridge for about a half hour. So because all that had to be done, I figured there's no point in just showing something I pretty much already showed in my other video. The one thing that's different though is a beef wellington does call for puff pastry dough. And puff pastry dough differs a little bit in the fact that it requires lighters. So what I need to do now is I need to roll this out in flour. But yeah, I know I did butcher the recipe that I, uh, you can either say I used twice as much flour as I needed, or half the butter I should have used. But I don't like overly buttery dough. I think it's weird tasting. I'm probably going to ruin the texture of it. Who knows? I'll find out. So, I had this in the fridge actually for close to 45 minutes. But now the idea is to basically roll this into a rectangle, well, knead it into a rectangle. Ooh, why is this black? Oh, uh, yeah, knead it into a rectangle and then roll it until one of the lengths is approximately three times longer than the width. Oh. And every single video I watched about puff pastry dough all insisted that you roll out, that you brush off the excess dough when folding it later on. So I guess I'm going to have to do that. I don't remember if it's supposed to roll towards you or away from you or both. I, I don't actually remember. I'm sure one of the ways is right, and I'm sure I'm doing it wrong. I don't really know how precise it's supposed to be. Actually, I think I'm just making bumps and making this worse. I probably should sure flatter would be better in this case. Oh, wait, that's much more than three times, probably. Yeah, I'm sure the effect will be the same in the end, I hope. Other than me spilling flour on my floor. Alright. Yeah, so basically you fold to the middle. Brush it on this. I don't know why they all use the brush. I think these are probably the wrong type of brushes to do that kind of stuff with. I mean, my dough is already over the amount of flour I'm supposed to have in it. This just feels pretentious and stupid, I'm not even going to lie. I mean, it is working for what I have to do, so I'm not really going to complain. Alright, so, uh, after doing this once, you rotate it 45, uh, 90 degrees, and then basically just keep repeating this process several times. Oh, 
Oh, nice. Looks like I'm going to break something in every single video. Alright. <clears throat> oh, wait, I didn't brush off the flower. That was the second. I'm probably going to do it five or six times. Turn. I guess there's nothing wrong with a brush off my flower all went to the side. Oh, I guess I did turn it. All right. That was three. Yeah, it was a brilliant idea to be working with flower um, and wear a black shirt. It is getting a little harder to roll out the more I uh, it. I guess that's a good sign. I mean, I could definitely feel the dough is changing in texture and consistency, so this isn't a complete waste of time. <coughs> I think this is either four or five. I don't know. I'll just do like two more or something. I believe this process would be very similar if I was making croissants, however, for croissants being more of a bread than a, I guess it's all bread technically, um, it would need yeast and I think sugar or something else. This is just salt, butter, water, flour. I apologize for that car horn in the background, if you can hear it, I don't know why someone just fell asleep on their steering wheel. Alright, 
after this fold, I need to wrap this back up in plastic, and it has to refrigerate for at least a half hour. Um, there isn't too much prep work, so I'm going to end this video after I put this in the fridge. Or when I put this in the fridge, I should say. And I'm just going to lay out some of my ingredients and do a little bit of prep work and measurement stuff. Actually, I don't, think I, I don't really have anything to measure out for this rest of this recipe, so... Yeah, so I'll see you guys in a half hour. Well, seconds for you. In the fridge it goes. Okay, so it's only been like 15 minutes actually, not a half hour. Um... And I'm actually going to commit the first uh, item of blasphemy to this recipe. Uh, there was no tenderloin, no large chunks of beef at the store I went to, and I don't really know where the first butcher or anything like that is near me. So I bought the, I don't want to say largest, but I basically just bought like more of a regular steak club steak, I don't know, it says Angus beef. I know it's the wrong cut for this. It's also definitely the wrong size. It's too thin and long, so I'm actually going to cut this um, and see if I can maybe double it up. What is this on top? This fat is just like... I don't know the point of leaving fat like this on here. Probably just keep the weight up. So let's just get rid of this big piece of fat back here. I mean, the whole point of this is to get a nice, lean piece of meat. Okay, let's do the same down here. I'm going to take that whole piece off the bottom. I'm about to, though. piece is coming off. So what I'm going to do, which is going to be the first unorthodox thing, is I'm going to cut this down the middle and hold it on top of it. Actually, can I just hold it? Yeah, actually, so I'm just going to leave this folded. My initial plan was to cut it and like maybe hold it together using something, but it is kind of staying right. Plus, this actually is more of the shape of the cut of meat I would probably need for something like a beef wellington anyway. I'm probably taking off too much fat now and just ruining the meat by tenderizing it in a way it's not meant to be. By overhandling it. I know something that like like the body temperature or something of your hands can change the flavor of meat the more you handle it. I don't really care too much about that. Just these are kind of getting in the way of the meat having the shape I want it to have. I regret not going to or looking for a butcher. Alright, well, that is the piece of meat I will be working with. So, any viewers I just lost, if anyone even tuned in at all, I deserve that. Okay. Oh, wait, that's raw meat. I should probably wash my hands. Another regret I did is the recipe, as you can see across from you, the recipe calls for some prosciutto, or I forgot what it's called. There's like another name for prosciutto. It's like something ham. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it's just prosciutto, though. So, uh, first, a little bit of salt and pepper for this meat. Some 
olive oil in the pan, bring it to a nice heat. And here the idea is to sear the outside of the meat on all sides while making sure the inside stays nice and rare. Actually, I shouldn't say rare, probably raw would be a better word. Because uh, most of the cooking is going to happen in the oven. I'm going to save. We'll do something with it. I don't know. Well, not with all the fat on the end, at least. Right, well, I'll cut that off later if I ever do anything with it. my nice cutting board the soap treatment. saying that prosciutto is not high quality prosciutto. It's whatever Met Food, I think is the store name. Mean. Met Food Markets. Um, yeah, and I'm not impressed with the flavor of that when I actually just tried a piece of it before. It almost had, I don't know, maybe that's just what prosciutto tastes like and I'm not Italian. I'm not, well, I'm not Italian at all, so I'm saying I'm not Italian enough. Um, yeah, so there's that. That'll go on the fire very shortly. <clears throat> This is only going to get about 30 seconds. On each side. It smells good at least, but I haven't had beef in a while actually. I've just needed a lot of chicken and pork. And about 30 seconds. Let's do this side. One, two, three. I just fried. I must have this way too hot. Alright, my oil is way too hot then. Oh, plus this is meat. Yeah, this is almost cooked. This is because I have a thin piece of meat folded. So I'm actually going to lower this for about 15 seconds on the side because this is much more cooked than I had hoped it would get at this point. I'll put it somewhere. That'll 
probably end up being most of it. So this I'm not done with. I'm going to add a little bit more oil to it. And this is the, well if you count the possibly low quality prosciutto as foul number two, strike number two. The meat I chose is strike one. This is probably strike three where I'm out. Um, I'm not using mushrooms. I don't really like mushrooms that much. So instead, I'm going to be sauteing some garlic and onion down here. Well, I'm cutting them first down here, then I'm going to throw them in this oil. And I'm going to season that with some black pepper and parsley. And a tiny bit of salt after I throw that in the oil. Well, this meat juice infused oil. You can stare at that if you don't want to watch me cut this. reduced down to as much nothingness as possible. So actually I'm going to blast this with heat because I just want all the water to just cook out. And yes, I guess that's an impatient cooking style that, yeah, I guess you could call that strike number four, actually. to a high fire than a medium higher, medium fire, I would say. I don't even max out the fire on that. And yes, I know I could just mash the garlic and probably be fine. However, I like that. I just said onion, garlic. However, I like having these thin discs of garlic when I cook, especially since I'm not going for a mashed or minced type of garlic in this anyway. Nice work, I guess. I don't have excellent form or anything, I don't think I was 
depriving you of anything worth seeing. Oh, uh, you guys are watching those onions to me, right? You're going to let me know when they're good? You know, it's funny cutting the onion all the time, the garlic is making me tear. Uh, if you ever have trouble tearing with chemicals coming up from vegetables that you're cooking, um, if you have, like, chewing gum or something, and you, like, chew, like, with your mouth open, that's supposed to help with that and ruin the flavor of what you're chewing at the same time. I believe you can also just salivate a good amount. The idea is that as the chemicals fly up from the temperature coming towards your eyes, the moisture in your eyes is actually what's grabbing them and what makes you start to tear. So, if you have something else generating the moisture instead, it'll grab onto that. <laughs> You know, it's funny, the one time I want my onions to shrink, well, no, they're definitely shrinking because the pan was overflowing, but the heat will kill anything on that, hopefully. Alright, season these veggies a little bit. Oh, I forgot the important step. I was supposed to put some mustard on the meat once it came out of the fire, and this is the part where I'm probably going to upset anyone from Britain that cares about that food too much by putting a French mustard on an English dish, or inside an English dish, I guess. But I like the junk. I don't know if there's any hostility between France and England or anything like that. Probably shake this. I hope these can be seen as acceptable improvisations instead of me tarnishing a dish. Okay. Mm, I mean, John is good though, I mean, especially if you're already a mustard fan in some extent. To some extent, I don't, I don't English well, as you can see. Did I salt these already? I'll do a little tiny, I don't think I salted them. I'll do a little bit just in case I did. And the parsley. That would be the reason why it's not coming out anymore. Now, sometimes I will water my onions at a stage like this, but usually that's if I'm using vegetable oil and that's when I want to soften them. But I think the amount I plan on having these cooked down, like to as much nothingness as possible, like I guess the um, like fully caramelized onions, like you might want for a burger, is kind of what I'm going for. And I'm not calling this a burger in any way. Uh, but what's funny is I even considered when they didn't have meat to just form a ground chuck patty and use that instead. And then that basically would have just been like a Wellington meatloaf, I guess. A beef one? I mean, it still would have been beef technically, but... Uh, oh, that's hot. It's so hot. Ow. I don't need my fingerprints anyway. Ow. Ow. Right. 
I'm just turning them like this to hopefully not drop anymore, but it's nice that it looks like I'm just presenting it to the camera. Okay, so once this cooks down, and maybe I'll just edit out a bunch of this anyway. The waiting, that is, for this to cook down. I'm going to dump it on top of the prosciutto that's behind me. I mean, the proscuti. The How is it spelled again? Proscaiuto. Yeah, the proscaiuto ham. <clears throat> and then drop that beef on top. Then I'll take my puff pastry out of the fridge, and it has been roughly. What has it been half hour? Yeah, I think it's been over a half hour now, actually. Since. Yeah, I've used all the ingredients I took out, so I guess. Oh, an egg wash. I am getting the egg wash, so I'll start. I can do that a little bit. I can do that more when I need it. I'll just do that right now. Yeah, so this is going to get edited out, so I don't want to stop talking. So I'm going to start cleaning up a little bit, and, uh, yeah. And I'm just going to use up all this prosciutto at this point because I don't think I'm actually going to eat this by itself. So I might as well use it in this dish. Maybe I won't edit this out. Who knows? Probably not going to edit anything out because I'm too lazy for that stuff. So I got a sheet of Prosciutto. And yeah, this is Applegate. Humanly raised pig prosciutto. I'm not going to recommend it. Um, I mean, it's three ounces of sliced meat. I ate one before and it was like one, two, three, four. Like there's less than, se it's seven, it's less than, a, no, it's not less, it's more than a dollar a piece. I probably would have preferred this using like actual ham, like like more generic ham. I mean, not going to go as far down to say bologna. I'm sure as far as any real chefs hearing me talk about this would say you might as well use bologna at that point. I don't know. If I ever do something like this again though, I am going to find a deli near me. Not a deli. A butcher. Everything gets weird how corner shops are now called delis, and a lot of them don't even serve delicatessen. Like, they shorten delicatessen down to deli, and that's what they're supposed to centralize in, and they don't even carry any of that. I, I find that, like, just mind-blowing at this point, that you can go to a deli and not find deli meats. Alright, these are starting to burn. Instead of fully caramelized away. Maybe these are the wrong type of onions, but maybe I just cut them too big. Yeah, I definitely could have cut these smaller. More surface area would have cooked faster and probably would have got the results I wanted faster. Plus, I feel like these should have been more minced for how I'm using this. I definitely should have cut these smaller. Well, it's a learning experience. Oh, that's, that's gone. Garbage. I'm 
tempted to throw this on my cutting board and see what I can chop without burning myself. You know, yeah. Hopefully I scream in pain and you guys can laugh. Always one sleep doesn't want to behave. Yeah, I definitely should have diced this onion before even throwing it in. flavor. I think I just drooled a little. Right, so I'm just going to let this caramelize for a little bit longer, but yeah, that looks much better. Caramelize any open spots. Yeah, so basically I'm going to pour this on top of that prosciutto, drop this meat in the middle, use that cellophane underneath to roll it up, twist off the ends, and then it's going to go in the fridge for about 20 minutes to a half hour. Uh, near the end of that, I'm going to roll out the dough. Wait, is that wrong? Do I fridge this? Yeah, no, no, I, I combine everything in the plastic like that, fridge it for a little bit, roll out the dough, put the entire contraption of these three pieces together. That's when I egg wash. I would egg wash both the inside and outside. And apparently I'm supposed to go pretty heavy with, oh, I never turned it back, sorry. Uh, apparently the egg wash is to help it stick and you want to go heavy because this cannot come unraveled. And, yeah. <clears throat> that should be good. And I'm not using all of this. This made more than I was expecting. this much because it's going to cook more in the oven. Yeah, whatever. Oh, it's also going to melt the plastic because how hot it is. Alright, so maybe I'll let that sit. And I'll try to cover some of the holes so that way the meat gets hot and hopefully it doesn't just go right to the plastic when I dump this on.
I don't know why, this smells more like fish than it does pork. This is just really weird. The shoot, I think. I almost want to put this in the freezer just so it does burn the plastic. Yeah, it's definitely hot enough. kind of hard to not like garlic and onions though. Okay, and you know what? This actually fits it pretty well. I will use a little bit. So I guess that was about one medium onion. And you know what? You can probably even go a little bigger. Or maybe if I didn't take that bite just now. Let's bring you with me. I'm sorry you didn't get to watch me pour those onions on top of the meat just now. No, it's got enough. Okay, good. I'm glad I used more of the prosciutto now. Oop. Onions are coming out. those back in and twist this off. Okay. So I think that's pretty much how tight I can roll this. And this is now going to sit in the fridge for about a half hour, and I'll see you guys then. Okay. So it has not been the full 20 or 30 minutes yet that the beef went in the fridge. However, I'm going to be rolling out my pastry dough, which is a little bit too cold. The butter hardened up a little bit too much because I guess I had that in there too long. I'm going to keep the cellophane here. Is this way? Yeah, I'll do it this way. Um, as you know from earlier this video, I did break my rolling pin by setting it down. Uh, while I was on my little hiatus just now, I tried super gluing it back in and it's holding okay. I'm going to do my best not to put too much pressure on it at that point. And I'm just going to do it a little bit this way also. And that's exactly how I broke it last time, that little tap like that.
I'm not even sure how thin I'm supposed to make this. To be completely honest, I feel like the thinner the better. And I am actually going to check the um, video again. Normally I will do my best to avoid using videos or anything like that, especially while I'm making a video. However, this is a dish that I've never really done or made before. I know his is very thin. It's going to take about the thickness of four to seven sheets of paper. And mine right now is like, I think at least twice as thick as I need this to be. I better just cut this, roll out the smaller piece because this is around the size I need. And I feel like all that folding I did before is like lost because of the way I'm rolling it out, but I mean I guess if it tastes any different than my pie dough did, then I guess I'll know that that's all from just those folds because everything else was the same. Yeah, pot pie. Yeah, I didn't make the quiche on film. Well, digital video media, I should say. Yeah, any extra pastry dough I have left, I'm going to make a little treat with. One of the recipes I looked at for dough, they didn't just stop at the dough, they actually went ahead and uh, used it for a small pastry. And yes, I don't have all the ingredients that that pastry would require, but again, I'm going to improvise. And I meant to pick up cinnamon when I was at the store before I completely forgot. Huh. It's because I didn't put it on my shopping list. <clears throat> I will say the dough does have a lot more elasticity, though, compared to the one I made for the pot pie. So I guess this is all coming from those folds. I don't know what that is. What's oh, coming off? Whatever it is, I'll sweep those up later. I think this is a little bit, this side's okay. I need to thin out up here. Oh, and this is going to stick to my counter now. Should have put some flour down. Okay, that's rolling so much better on the countertop than on the cellophane. Yeah, that's better. That's, that's more like what I want. Well, what I think I want, I don't actually know. This is new to me the first time I'm even attempting a recipe like this. I mean, I can't imagine needing anything more than a something between a six or eight inch square of this dough. Roughly, I don't know. And there is one more thing I'm going to check out. And that is exactly how he did wrap it. Like, do I leave the ends open or am I covering the sides also? Alright, it's been about 20 minutes now, I believe, from when I put that in there. So, by that... Sorry, should avoid using pronoun games. The, uh, the steak, I guess. The onion garlic prosciutto steak combo. That should be good. If there's anything that might be too thin. But I'll deal with it. What did I just say I was going to do? Wow. My memory is...
pretty bad, I guess. I wasn't going to do flower. Right, I was going to check how he rolled it before I take mine out and start actually doing it. <clears throat> By he, I mean Gordon Ramsay. He made like a little video and that was kind of my basis for this. Okay. So he went very generous with the uh, egg wash on the outside. The inside just got like a regular amount. Actually, no, that's not the thicker coating I probably would have used, but that's fine. Okay. I think I have an idea of what to do to roll it. Coat it, roll it, cover it, whatever. That is. Now, I'm just using a little bit of parsley on the outside on the top afterwards, just more as an aesthetic garnish, not really for any flavor there. Oh, you know what, I'll leave this in the fr I'll just beat my egg, I'll leave this wrapped up at least though. important step I actually meant to do right now while I was doing the dough. Oven gets preheated to 400 and it's going to cook inside for about 20 minutes I believe. It. No. 400 for, I, I think it is 20 minutes actually. 20, 25 minutes, half hour, something like that. Alright, so that's preheating. It would help if I got a bowl or a cup or something for this. It would probably help me a lot. Should be good. All right, well, I'm glad it's holding its shape. Um, did I say that too soon? Yeah, I mean, it is greasy, but then again, it's oil filled and oil covered. Yeah, that's what the apron is for, right? No, I probably just stained this and ruined it. Maybe I'll bleach it or something. Let's get the knife ready. Hmm. His egg looked much yellower. Maybe he just had like actual lighting. I know that's one of the worst things about my videos. My lighting is atrocious. Yeah, that was not my greatest idea ever. I mean, it's fine. The little pastry tart thing I was going to make with the dough also requires an egg wash. It's uh, like two or three egg washes, actually, if I remember it correctly. And I'm pretty sure I have enough dough to make at least two of them. Or I'm going to try anyway, even if I don't have enough dough.
I'm still going to have to cut more dough off of this, I think. Hmm. No, you know what, maybe not. This is a good amount of dough. Oh, is this not enough? Did I cut too much off? Yeah, I guess I cut off too much. I would feel better if I had a little bit more than this, actually. Oh, well. Mm. Maybe I could just wrap that a little bit tighter. Okay, yeah, tighter was the way to go, I think. Alright, my dough seems to be losing some of its elasticity right now. I'm actually going to take a strip of this dough that has the egg on it and just make like a little seal on top and I know it looks ugly. I'm starting to regret having cut off as early as I did. Okay, now I need to use a lot of egg wash on the outside. And I probably should have prepared a baking sheet before covering my hands in egg like this. Alright, let me get that baking sheet ready. Also, I gotta score it. My oven's just now preheated. I was too concerned with having some dough left over to make another item that I should have focused more on the actual main dish. Um, and that's my own stupidity and negligence at that point. And I'm just going to check his video once more. Again, by his, I mean Gordon Ramsay.
to see if um he put like foil or spray or anything. I think he did parchment paper. Nope, it looks like foil. And this goes for 20 minutes. Timer, 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 two, zero, zero, zero. I mean, I'm pretty sure that meat is very close to being edible now. I think this is just 20 minutes, so that's how long Paul Pastry takes to cook. Get this salt out of here, this piece of onion. I want to eat it, but I'm not gonna. Okay. Let's do something with this dough now. I don't know if this actually still counts as puff pastry dough, considering the way I just, uh, handled it so I'm gonna refold it a couple times as I did at the beginning well for you guys what's gonna be the beginning of this video oh it's a piece of the uh, parsley So knead it into a rectangle or square-like shape, and then roll it out. All right, well, I hit the counter harder that time, and it didn't. Ooh, that's why I need flour. I forgot to do flour. Yeah, let me sprinkle some flour on the counter and on the rolling pin real quick. And yes, I know there is egg inside of this dough now, and this is not now the same dough that I initially had because of that, but this is basically leftover playtime. that extra stickiness is definitely from the egg so this flour will dry that out which makes me feel like I'm probably gonna have to put this back in the fridge actually as if I was making a brand new dough
Oh, this is probably egg or moisture on the counter. All right. Well, I have to be a little bit more serious with the sponge later, that means. Okay, now it's rolling out more properly. I'm back at a square now. No, well, not for long. Okay. Yeah, so I'm just gonna make the little tart things out of this. Yeah, I still got 15 minutes on that one, so I should have some time. Let's, huh. Yeah, all right, so let's come back over to the cutting board. Get the onion and meat residue off this knife. Should have got all the flour off my hands before washing them, but whatever. I am going to be making little uh, apple walnut tarts with the leftover dough. Uh, they were basically the, one of the things I saw online when I was looking up pastry dough. They did um, just cinnamon apple puff pastries. And at the time I was like, oh, I don't have cinnamon. Um, however, I do have apples. I'm sure there's better ways to decor an apple. I don't really know them. the first cut I did it's not a bad size like for a slice apple if you want it as a snack but for what I'm doing really need something as thin as you can make them so if you have a deli slicer whip it out you lucky bastard if you don't just keep doing some cuts until you get a few that are 
I don't know, I guess cut at least half the apple, maybe even the whole thing if you feel like it. And then just per pastry you want to make, four or five of these little apple things should be good. I think the dough I have, I could probably make two or three. So I'm going to cut 15 of these thin little apple things. <coughs> going to make these two separate videos. Um, that dough I'm using for this is leftover from a beef wellington onion. I'd like to say cooking, but I'm probably just more butchering and letting down the entire United Kingdom by even calling it a beef wellington. Um, I also probably should have washed this apple, but no, I'm going to cook it, so it should be alright. Yeah, that was pathetic. I am ashamed of that. should be more than enough apples for what I want to do, and don't worry, I'll be eating this later as a snack, or, well, some of it now. Alternative to doing this, I was contemplating um, just getting like a Ziploc bag, a uh, plastic bag or something, and literally like stepping on it. But I was like, you know what? That doesn't sound too sanitary. Walnuts are delicious though. Okay. Pecans are good too. Almonds I have to be in the mood for. And for some reason I don't buy cashews, but I like cashews when I have them. Those are my other go-to snacks. Alright. <clears throat> Got about 10 minutes left on that beef wellington. So hopefully I can at least get this mostly prepped before then. So let's go back over to the other side. Right. So I'm going to roll this out. And I think these I don't want too thin. I don't even remember where I found that video, so I can't consult it. But I definitely want this to be thicker than I used for the other, for the Beef Wellington. So hopefully this is thicker than that one. Alright, so this will be a little one, I guess. These might be too small, actually, for what I want to do. Alright, so it looks like I have one, two, three, four, five. And this is something I thought was weird that they did. I'm assuming it's for aeration, but they literally just went to town with a fork. I'm, I don't know if I'm doing too many or not. I wasn't fully paying attention to this part of the video. I don't even know if I'm supposed to go clean through or not.
I think I am supposed to go clean through, but I'm not. Because knowing me, I'm going to go straight through and just crack my counter. And I think this is where they were using cinnamon sugar. I think they did both beginning and end, but I'm going to do something a little bit different at the end instead of doing sugar. I'm going to drizzle honey over them to make these honey apple walnut tarts. For all I know, these are going to be a giant failure. I, I don't know. I don't really know what I'm doing half the time when I cook. Don't let this confidence confuse you. It's fake. It's probably not even existent. Alright, so... Alright, so actually I'm going to be using a lot less apple than I thought. There's one there. Hmm. Uh, maybe I'll actually cut these the other way. Because I do want to fan them across the middle. And I can't really do that how big they are. There we go, that's better. Yeah, so I definitely made these too small. Uh, probably supposed to be twice as wide as I made them. Hopefully, these are going to puff up brilliantly in the oven, because that's what the one in the video I watched, what they did. I'm probably putting too much out. Like, it kind of puffed up and then cooked over and started to surround these. Probably should have put these under the apple, now that I think about it, yeah. A couple pieces of walnut. And then the apple pieces. Just press it down. Probably not supposed to do that either. Some walnut. And then I'm just going to press it down. And I'm not going to say that every time, I hope. But there's some walnut and press it down. Now I'm just curious. Let's just do some sugary apple. Yeah, no, apples have enough sugar on their own. They don't need... They don't need extra. Also, I don't think my sugar's fine enough. Pure crane extra fine granulator. I guess it doesn't get any finer than that. Did I do this one yet? No, I did not. Okay. I was supposed to cover these in egg wash before doing the sugar. Alright, I'm just going to do the exposed part. Yeah, so if you're going to do anything like this, Make sure you egg wash before putting sugar or walnuts or apples or whatever kind of tarts you decide to make. Alright. 
and now to just drizzle some honey. Gotta microwave this for a little bit just to. I know it probably ruins the sugar and everything, but I don't really care. I'd rather be able to use it. So, 15 seconds in the microwave later. That's better. Actually, no, it's not. Why not? Alright, I guess I'm not going to be able to do as much of a drizzle. I'm just going to have to... Oh. Alright. I'm starting to think honey might have been a bad idea because I feel like that's just going to completely burn in the oven. Um, but similar to the other thing I had. Yeah, so that's it for the prep on these. I'm going to... Um, Head back to my beef wellington now. And clean my cutting board, I guess, because I'm going to need that. Okay, so back to the beef wellington. Uh, one more thing about a beef, the beef wellington is normally is supposed to be served with a wine sauce. Oh, you're not even looking the right way. I do not, I didn't make one. I have wine sauce left over from a pork roast I made. The wine was too sweet for the vegetables I cooked, but the sauce, the gravy, whatever you want to call this, and the pork came out actually really good. At least I thought it did. Um, um, I did add a bunch of seasonings and a beef bouillon cube to this after I found out how sweet the sauce came out. And that didn't really help the vegetables because I think too much sugar got cooked in with them and they were just, they weren't even like candied or anything, they were just like near inedible. So I did have to throw those out or I, I tried to eat, force myself to eat them a little bit. And the Wellington's actually not ready yet. Um, it, it is starting to brown, so I feel like it just needs another couple minutes. I'm going to use the same tray, just put different foil on it. Video, I was thinking about splitting this up into two videos, but... Yeah. <clears throat> I'll be late. Yeah, 
Yeah, let's take a look. You guys can watch it also. There we go. It's starting to cook. It definitely unraveled a bit. So I definitely lost a shitload of points for that. Um, I mean, I'm going to cut into it, maybe turn it up. I'm going to turn it upside down before I cut into it. No, I'm not. That sounds like a bad idea. I am, however, going to microwave a small portion of this sauce. It's the closest thing to a small dish I have. Yeah, if I remember this, I probably would have put this on the stove and maybe added a little bit to it or tasted it and made sure it was still good. Or like if I wanted to do anything to the flavor of it for this, because it's not what I actually cooked this sauce for. Prepared, not cooked. I should say. But I forgot about it until like right now. I think when I went to microwave, I hit cancel, and that actually uh, removed my timer. I'm starting to wish I just stabbed it with toothpicks. But at this point, I feel like it's been there a little too long. I'm actually going to move it up and broil it. Which is probably another huge no-no, so I think I'm up to like strike seven at this point. Maybe it's just too wet. I mean, some parts of the top... Oh, actually? It's firm to the touch. I'll leave it in there for just like another four minutes then, actually. I'm not going to broil it. Oh wow, that made a mess. I microwaved that too long. Oof. I mean, it smells like sweet red wine and beef bouillon, so. <laughs> I mean, there was definitely a lot of herbs and some vegetables and other stuff in there, but aromatically, no, it does have a meat flavor also, meat scent, I should say, but the two notes that definitely hit me first are the uh, sweet smell from the wine and probably from the vegetables as well, and a bit of that bouillon. Actually, that's probably the meat smell I'm talking about. That's probably just the bouillon, not the uh, pork that I actually cooked this in. That was two minutes. Got another two minutes to go. Apple. It's probably not good for these to sit out of the fridge like this for as long as I've had them sitting like this. cover with the egg yolk. I mean, I have a minute or two to kill anyway, so. Okay. I'm 
I'm taking it out a minute early. Well, I mean, it's actually late, but it's minutes a minute before the time that I checked. So that was three extra minutes I gave it. So I think this did get closer to 25 minutes in the oven. And there she is. Dump some of that liquid off, which is probably a bad idea. Not 100% sure where that liquid came from. way to do this without regretting it. Already starting to regret it. That's good enough. Wait, actually, I still need this. Okay, and these are getting 25 minutes. Okay. Just gotta clean up a tiny bit, sorry. This is not the best time to do that. <clears throat> this out, but I think by now we know I'm not going to. If anyone wants to edit my videos, just let me know. You can add stupid effects or crop up horses at rear end to my nose. I don't really care too much. Apples and honey are so good though. Mm. Okay, where was I? Right. right let's clean my knife. Because I don't remember what was left on it. Okay, it's getting quite stuck to the foil, actually. Okay, well, it definitely came out layered, as some of these other layers just kind of came right off, which is good. 
it is one piece for the most part. I'm actually shocked this piece didn't just fly right off. It smells very good, like better than I was expecting it to. All right, so let's. Came apart a tiny bit on one of the sides. So let's just ignore that side for now, but let's see. All right, good. It's cooked on the outside from the searing. The inside's pink. I guess it's a little bit past medium rare. Oh, that just makes it medium. <laughs> no, because it's, I don't know, maybe it is medium rare, because I don't know if this counts as medium, because there's still some pink in there. I don't really know what accounts for what when it comes to meat. Um, it does just look like I took t two s flat steaks and just crammed it in there. And let's cut this nice and thick. And yeah, it's falling apart as I cut it. Because it's not actually wrapped. Um, I mean, it's definitely still edible. <clears throat> and as such, I'm definitely going to eat it. That I cut way too thin. So I'm just going to leave that piece alone. Oh, onions. And do I have a fork somewhere? Yeah, this one's fine. So let's just take a nice bite of this. So all the pieces are there. <laughs> um, I definitely should have let this sit longer before cutting into it. I, I feel like it's going to dry out now because I didn't let it reabsorb its juices. I really like the flavor of it. Um, the meat is too tough. The mustard I don't really taste at all. No, that's a lie. It's in there. Um, and definitely going to try this again. Two things I am going to do. I'm going to buy a puff pastry from the store. Just because this is still my... It's a little bit too biscuit-like. So I'm not sure if that's from improper handling or if it's really because I'm just so against using the amount of butter I'm supposed to that I'm basically just, I'm probably just making biscuit dough because that's probably what the difference is. And I guess if I'm not the one making it and I'm not seeing how much butter goes into it, I don't really care as much. <clears throat> Here, this piece looks nice. This I'm okay presenting. Just pretend all of this doesn't exist. Uh, no, I take that back. This piece. So just these two. Just none of this. None of this exists. This is my beef Wellington. My mistake Wellington. My beef not so Wellington. I don't know. I mean, the dough's not as biscuit-like as it was when I did the other one. So there definitely is a difference in its taste. I also may have rolled it a little bit thinner. So let's try this now with the wine sauce. And that's way too big of a bite. Oh, that's much better. For the next 20 or so minutes while I wait for those pastries to puff up, I'm going to put some of this on a plate and dig in, and I'll see you guys in a few seconds for dessert. Okay, so I actually am not waiting that full 25 minutes I put on the clock. I stopped it about six minutes early, because they're definitely starting to brown. They smell sweet. 
Uh, the honey over caramelized, that's why it looks burnt. However, uh, the dough's a nice golden color. The apple's charred up and the, it did puff up. And yeah, I guess it's time for me to try one of these as well. Assuming I don't completely burn myself. Let's take this completely disfigured one. Yeah, that was that completely burning myself thing I just talked about. I mean, these definitely would have been so much better if I had some cinnamon to throw in here also. No, that's too hot. That's fresh out the oven. This is still 400 degrees, which is basically double what I need to boil water. So, yeah. Um... <clears throat> I'll do my best to take a bite of this before I close the video off. Uh, maybe if I do something like this again, maybe I'll either use a lot less honey or just not use the honey at all because the fragrance is getting that burnt sugar smell. I'm hoping that's not going to carry over to the taste. It's not in a bad way, like it's not overly burnt. I didn't get much of a taste of the walnuts, maybe, hopefully this one just didn't have that many. I'm actually going to borrow that piece. Maybe as they cool, because that had a lot of walnut flavor. Actually, I kind of see the walnuts on this piece, so the apples kind of came up when I bit it. It didn't really puff up and around as much as I hoped. This one started to, actually. This one it did a little bit too. I guess I just got to make these bigger next time. Um, there is no burnt flavor, so maybe I'll stick to using honey and just use less. Actually, maybe I'll skip the apples and just do walnut. Because that bite was very walnutty and that one was good. Oh. Huh. Stuff the napkin? Alright. Um, they almost taste like, um, those Chinese almond cookies, a little bit, probably just the sugar and the other stuff. These aren't as much as a failure as I thought they would be, so, on that note, this is my dinner, well, dinner, dessert, lunch, dinner, late dinner, whatever, late lunch, I don't know. I ate this, I'm gonna have another one of these. I like them both. I'm definitely going to make Beef Wellington again with some changes. Firstly, get the right steak and the right ham. Parm ham. I'm just going to call it for you. <clears throat> Second, uh, the onions, I guess I'll do them smaller. I'm actually not upset with the way it came out because I took them out and diced them up later. I think that's about it. Yeah, just not, I'm not going to make dough myself, or at least I'm going to see why my dough's not puffing up as much as I thought. It's probably the way I'm handling it. I'm probably like flattening those layers I'm making and I'm not treating it gentle enough. That's just my guess, that I'm just crushing those layers back into each other and then it's just the same as never having folded it at all. And yeah, so that's apple walnut tarts and beef wellington. No, I'm going to go with Beef Not So Wellington. I'll probably name this video that also. Thanks for watching. Bye.